from UNISA's College of Education, we're joined by Mark van Heerden, who's going to talk to us about science and innovative ways to learn and teach the subject. Thank you for joining us, Mark. Hi, thanks. Good morning to you. There seems to be a perspective amongst learners in high schools that science is just far too difficult to pursue at a tertiary level. What would you say to this? I'd say, nah, science should be fun. You know what? If you ask the same question to primary school children, they would just be really... Science is fun and they see it and they enjoy it. I think by high school they get a bit trapped with the, with the testing and the assessment. And I think really two by four teachers, let me just explain, two covers of a book and four walls of a classroom. You need to break out of that, go outside, you know, be creative, go on trips, use the school grounds to teach. Don't just teach from the textbook. Can you tell us how you've broken out of the two by four mentality? The most inspiring are actually the children that I teach with and the teachers that I work with. So, yeah, they've really inspired me. And, uh, well, whenever you're ready, I'll do some examples to sort of show you how I think we could use creative teaching. Yes, I was about to say, I'm looking at you, but you've also got something very interesting next to you. Can you tell us a bit about this? That is very interesting. This is a very simple vector toy. One of my uh, students made it. If you see, it's made out of wood. Very simple. Homemade, no cost involved. This is a sinker from a fishing. If you go fishing, that's a little sinker. You can use an old nut to be fine. Now, vectors is quite a challenging problem in the new syllabus. So, for instance, uh, you would get a um, question. The diagram would look something to the string that I'm holding. And really, to make it more fun and interesting, we could just design some labels and ask the learners to put them on. I'm pulling this object to my, uh, um, it'll be your right. And then you would ask a question, well, let's see if you remember your signs. You're luckily not floating up in the sky, so the force of gravity will be down. All right, then you would just label that, and then... Well, we have to get our labeling properly, of course. Hey, that would help. This is the tension force, by the way, up here. <laughs> That'll be the force of gravity down. And then the applied force will be this one here, where I'm actually pulling a force. What is difficult about this section of work is, and of course you'll see the string makes an angle over here. What makes this section difficult to teach is that it's quite abstract. But by making it concrete and fun, you can really, and use colored little arrows, uh, you can draw the proper force diagrams and vector diagrams. So you make something that might appear very difficult to teach. Actually, it's quite easy to teach if you're just a little bit creative. So that will be the grade 11 physics, one of the examples that we could look at. Well, you make a good point, Mark, that you don't necessarily need... Um, a lot of money or strange resources to make science compelling in the classroom. You're quite right. You know, a lot of uh, items are household. And I think uh, teachers just need to be a little bit creative. Important part of the creative process, I think, is that groups of teachers should work together. But not just science teachers. You should work with the biology, the math, the language teacher, the life orientation teacher and just exchange some ideas.